so welcome to the live online demo of Google Screening. Uh, we'll be using the WaveMaker G4 Mini and the Compact Rings. Um, thank you for all your time today. I hope you'll learn a little bit more about our technology and how it can help you. Uh, my name is Jackie Berry and I'm the Global Distributor Manager for Gull. Today we also have with us Alan Parker who will be conducting the live demo and later in the event we will hear from Mike Walker from NDT Global Services who's been a very good customer of ours um, for many years and he'll be giving you his experience of working with us on our equipment. I know we're all keen to get onto the demo, um, but I think probably it'd be good to start with who we are and what we do, just for those people that don't know, and I'll keep it as short as possible. If you have any questions, we'll come to them at the end of the event. Uh, there is a chat page uh, and a questions page on this, on this site, so please raise your hand in the chat section and type your question, and we'll come to it in the, uh, to the end. So we're the world leader of guided wave technology. Our headquarters are based in London. And in 2019, we celebrated our 20th year in business. We're a manufacturer and we're not an inspection company. That's not what we do. Uh, this is where we do all our hardware, software, sensors, and they're all designed, developed and manufactured here. We also research and all the research and developments done in the UK head office. And we have a strong academic link with Imperial College London, who have the world leading researchers in guided wave technology. In 2018-19, we decided to open up two new offices, one in America in Houston, Texas, and one in Malaysia, KL. This was to enable us to support our rapidly expanding client base and try and support them more locally. So as you can see from here, we are a truly global company. We've got units on all seven continents and we've sold more than five and a half thousand systems in over 50 countries. So you can see here, as I say, as I mentioned before, we've got an office in KL, which is run by our Asia Middle East team. Some of you are on the call today. We have an office in the US in Houston, which is run by Danny Keck, also on this call today. And finally, our headquarters are in London. So to support you, we have our CEO, Dr. David Elaine. You've got myself. I look, generally look after the distributor network. We have Alan Parker, who will be doing the demo today for us. And we've got Dr. Jimmy Fong and Dr. Karen Dacup. So I quite like this slide because it shows you our timeline for our product development and it hopefully shows you that we are a really progressive company and we don't stand still in our technology. So very quickly in 1986, we started with a pure poorly understood signal from Imperial College. And by 1998, with more and more knowledge and research that was gained, it enabled us to introduce our WavePro software uh, to be created, which we still use today. And of course, many more features are added constantly. In 1999, Gull was formed. G3 WaveMaker was created, and this is still working in many places around the world. That's just how reliable the equipment is. The next six years, we introduced G-Scan equipment for rail, which was for a very specific application. The first subsea ring, and we had our initial design for PIMS, permanently installed monitoring systems. 2008, the G-PIMS was launched, along with, in 2010, some high temperature rings. 2014, we saw our fourth generation of the screening unit, which is the one we're going to see today. Um, and we're continuing to develop more rings from customers' requirements. We're very customer focused and we listen to what they say. 2016, the compact rings were introduced to work alongside the other rings, but they had added benefits that they were more portable, more lightweight, lower profile and easier to use. Our newest member of the family was in 2018, and we added scanning to the portfolio, which was the QSR. As part of our development program, we're going to see the QSR able to inspect smaller and larger pipe diameters, and we continuously improve the WavePro software, and lots more exciting things coming along with the GPIMS, and that's obviously still to come. So corrosion and erosion is a significant portion of the billion dollar problem the oil and gas industry face with the ever aging assets and plants. So let's look at our solutions. All our products are based around guided waves and we have a number of solutions to choose from. We have screening, which we're going to learn more about today. 
We have scanning, which is a quantitative tool for corrosion under pipe supports or cups. We have monitoring, and this is when the cost of getting to the pipe is going to cost you more than the actual inspection, such as remote places, difficult to access pipes. And then by continuing to monitor and compare the results, you're going to look for any change in the condition of the pipe. Then we have sub C, which has benefited from our experience on the top side inspection, which now allows us to have a reliable modular system, which can be for ROV or diver deployed. So today we're going to be talking about the screening tool, WaveMaker G4 Mini and the rings. We have two models of the WaveMaker instruments. We have the G4 Mini Base and we have the G4 Mini Full. The most popular is the G4 Mini Full due to its, due to its versatility. However, the base is a good option, especially if your challenge is a limited budget. The base is fully upgradable to a full version later if you require. And we have to remember that the base is still a very powerful system comparing to anything else on the market you'll get today. But when you talk to our experts, we'll help you choose the rings, the units, the sensors that's right for you and your application. So you don't need to worry about that. We can help you with all those things. So you can see here the setup of the configuration. We have the laptop with the WavePro software. We have the collector unit and the ring on the pipe. And it really is that simple. And as I say, Alan will show you this later on today. So here we have typical distances. It's always a question that we get asked. So here you can see typical distances that you can achieve using the WaveMaker in certain conditions. This range, of course, is each way. So, for example, in a generally corroded pipe, you would expect to get around 20 metres each way, 40 metres in total. And don't forget that, uh, that even, even at three metres, the, one of the worst case scenarios, you're still getting an awful lot more knowledge of what's happening in that pipe than any other NDT method. It's a screening tool. So we've got many options of rings in various sizes. Uh, you can typically go from three quarter inch, which we have a claw for, tubes and pipes. And you can go up to 70 inches with the AFC and compact rings. You also have the option to combine two rings together. And our temperature range goes from minus 40 C up to 350 degrees C. And that's with using the high temperature rings. So here is just a few of our many clients that we have all around the world who own a wave maker. Largest market for us is USA, South America and Europe, but we're developing the Middle East and Africa and Asia rapidly now that we've got a base in, uh, in Malaysia. So we're hoping to expand in those marketplaces. So this is our screening, our scanning unit, the QSR, which stands for CUPS, Corrosion Under, uh, under Pipe Supports. The detection of cups can be done typically with visual inspection. However, uh, the problem our customers are facing is the ability to accurately size the corrosion under the support. The QSR will give you the nominal and remaining wall thickness, which will enable us sizing the corrosion for fitness for service assessment. Currently, the QSR, you can be used on pipes with a diameter of 6 to 24 inches, pipe thickness 6 mil to 13 mil. But as already mentioned, we are currently working on expanding this range for smaller and larger diameter pipes. So look out for this on our website, social media, emails, etc. And again, this is a list of our clients, uh, many who own multiple units, not just one. We then go on to the Gull monitoring part of our portfolio, which is the permanently installed monitoring. The benefit of this, as I say, is the access to test point is only required once. You can easily compare the data of each test and then you have the capability of measuring wall thickness on the sensor location. This is very easily set up. You have a control unit, a sensor and a solar panel. And the solar panel is to power and recharge the batteries. With our continued development, the system operates Wi-Fi, operates 4G, and links to our Gull Monitoring Studio. We've got a lot more information that we can give you on this if you're interested in this product line. But as I say, this is an overview, and we're here actually to talk about the WaveMaker G4 Mini. We also have rail applications, and we have subsea applications. And again, we can talk to you about this later. So finally, Gull offers a comprehensive training package where you can learn about the theory of guided wave, along with how to set up the rings on a pipe and how to collect and interpret the data. 
At the moment, with the current pandemic we're in and due to travel restrictions, um, we can offer these courses via e-learning. Um, we've been doing this since early 2020 and it's been really very successful. Once restrictions are lifted, we will go back to offering direct uh, training as usual. But I can actually see e-learning continuing alongside that. So I hope that was all OK for you. It was a very quick overview. I hope you've learned a little bit about from what we do. Um, just before I hand you over to Alan for the live demo, we'll be putting you all on mute. I think you already are so that we don't have any, any interference. Don't forget, we'll answer all your questions at the end of the demo. So if you have any, answer, any questions, please raise your hand and I'll come to them at the end. So now we're going to go to the exciting bit. I'd like to hand you over to Alan Parker and he will be demonstrating live how the WaveMaker G4 Mini can be used in the field using the compact rings. So over to you, Alan. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. I'm Alan Parker. As you can see, I'm in the uh, sample room. And obviously, this is the live part of the demonstration. So I'm standing right by the two sample pipes that I'm obviously going to be doing. First of all, the six inch, where I'm actually going to show you how I'm going to attach the compact ring to the six inch and discuss the merits of the compact ring. And also, right, this is the test piece that I'm going to do. It's an eight inch spool piece. There is a support just down this end. Then we move on to a weld. Then as we come across where I've got the compact ring, there's another weld. And then at the end of it is this is the ideal location, obviously, to gather the data for this pool piece. And what I have here is basically the G4 Mini and the associated cables, including the laptop, to conduct the test. Right, back on to... Back on to the compact ring. This is the new latest version, lightweight. Glad for that because I'm obviously trying to handle it. Now then, what do you find? There's low profile probes in it. And the probes, different to the conventional rings, have three probes instead of two. And what this will enable you to do is to change it by just putting data cables in rather than manually changing the distance between the probes. So that saves, obviously, in doing each module with all. So this, obviously, you can see, requires less clearance around the spool piece. So I'm now going to attach it to the 6 inch. <coughs> And that's it. That's how easy it is to go on. Okay, so obviously that's where the data cables go. So this is showing you the ease of placing the ring on there. So I'm moving on now to the test piece that I am doing. So this is the eight inch ring. So these are the data cables. So what I do is I install the data cables So that's the ring done complete. Then I will put the data cables on to the G4 Mini. So that's installed. The next thing I'm going to do is pump up the ring. This requires 40 PSI. That's a ring fully inflated. So 
So the next thing I'm going to do is start the G4 Mini. So this is my unique key. So I switch on the instrument. So that's my signature. So my key is telling me what qualifications I've got, right? And then it says that it's valid to 2024. And my initial key was issued in back in the millennium 2000. So I've been doing it for 21 years. Now to give me a little bit of my background and my association with GUL, I've been involved with them since 1998, while they were based in Imperial College. And I've obviously taken most of these exams and everything through the 21 years I know them. So that's it. Just to give you my background, I've been involved with inspection for 35 years plus. That's all I'm that's all I'm prepared to admit is the 35 years plus. Okay, now I've done this. I'm going to move on now to setting up the software to run it. So this is the screen. If we go back on the screen, there's two tests on the screen here at the moment, but I can change. But there's the capacitance test here. So this is showing me that all the actual modules on the ring is working correct. They're all up on high. So I go back in. And what I do then is looking at the ring coupling. So I put that on. There it is. And then I take a metallic there and I just press it there just and it shows you that that is also working. So going back here. Now, what I do now is I attach the data cable from the G4 to my computer. So now it's on the computer. So hopefully you can see my screen. Right, and I'm, obviously I hope that you can see my screen. So what I've got here is the screen itself. So I'm looking at the bottom itself. It tells me I've got a ring attached. And I'm actually going to set up the screen for doing it. So you find up here there is the site. It's GUL. The datum is a weld, which is the first weld. And then, obviously, the uh, pipe diameter is 8-inch diameter. It's 1.5 meters, the ring is, from the well that I've already measured at. And what I'm also going to do is put in the actual thickness. So the thickness of the pipe is 818 Right, and what I then can look at, so I've got all the actual information of the pipe in. So I then look at the advanced side. So I've got this window open, but actually tells you if I need to average or not. Looking at the condition of the pipe, there seems to be no problem with coating or roughness and everything else. So I'm gonna now 
it was just averages of four. So I'm going to accept that. Then I'm going back in to my screen here, and then I'm using this to collect. At the moment, it's actually going through the collection phase. All right, so this is gathering the data from the eight inch pipe to the computer through the G4. So you can see, obviously, if you can see my screen on there, you can see this application happening. So in this case, obviously, I got to wait. So it's telling me on the top here where the green is, but that's where it is going through the sequence, and it's about halfway. So all I'm going to say, right, it doesn't take long. So I'm not going to hold up anybody just looking at these lines on his screen. Right, that is over. And now we can see the analysis screen. And what we've got. Right then, what I'll show you first of all, I'm going to remove a pictorial view on top of it, and I'm also going to call up the C scan. The C scan is a pictorial view of the pipe itself. It starts on the top of the pipe, and this is the 12 o'clock, and then it goes around the clock positions 12, 3, 6, 9, and 12. There's various other things I can actually do. So you notice I've now enhanced the actual one. And also, on the bottom here, right, I've used absolute calibration. So where these pipe ends are, you notice there's green little symbols on the top of these to show that absolute calibration has actually happened and has set the DACs. So what I'm going at the moment, I'm going up here to be on the top, and I'm going to go for edit. So I'm pressing edit, and I'm going down. And what I'm going to do is delete all features. So what I'm actually doing now, I'm actually doing the interpretation of this particular one. So what we've got on here, where the green and the gray is, the green is where the ring is. So, and the actual gray part is the near field. So what I've got, I've got to this end, right? But I have got the end of the pipe. So what I do, I right click on this particular one, add the feature, the closest thing to a cut end, obviously on real life plant is a flange. So I'm actually going to use a flange feature So this is a flange feature. I place it here, say yes, and that basically removes all the unwanted thing that you do want to interpret. And now what I've got is from the cut end, where the ring placement is, and going across. So the next thing is the end pipe there, that's the end of the test. So what I do, I go for the add the feature, I go to the flange, and I add the feature, yes. So what we've got left is basically the diagnostic length I've achieved and obviously inspection area I'm looking at. So here, I've got a weld, so I do the same here. So I add the feature, which is a weld. I put that here. And then here, I've got the other weld. This is the first weld you can see from the ring, right? So I go add feature, and I place the weld there. And the other part I've got in between the both welds, I've got this 
feature here. It, you can see it quite plain, obviously, on my C scan. And let me explain the C scan. This here is basically where the cut end is. This is where the weld, uh, sorry, where the ring placement is. And this is the weld. This is the other weld. And this is quite a severe defect. So what I do, I will do the feature here. I will add, obviously, what I believe what it is, is a severe defect. I put it here. And remember what all, this also gives you, the length from where the ring is to where these features are and also where the defect is. And then I'm going to ask the camera to go across in between the both wells and actually highlight the defective area. So the defective area is about 25% of the pipe, and it's usually on the bottom part of it. And at the moment, I believe I can't see it on my screen, but I believe that obviously you can see the defect. So I'm quite happy with this particular one. So that now, if I go into report, that's my report. Right window means I have actually completed my report. I can also add a photograph into the image by taking the photograph of the pipe. And that's me complete and finished my reports. Okay, that is the end of this live demo. We're now moving on to there. So back to you, Jackie. Thank you, everybody. OK, so thanks, Alan, for that detailed presentation. Um, I hope you've learned all learned something about our technology and actually how easy it is to set up the entire system and start collecting data. It was very quick. I hope, uh, hope you all agree. So moving on to the next part of our agenda, we are very, very pleased to be joining us today with Mike Walker from NDT Global Services based in the UK. Um, very good customer of ours, has been a customer of ours for many years and since 2004. So um, it would be good, Mike, if you could introduce yourself and tell us uh, what it's like working with Gull on our equipment. So um, over to you, Mike. Uh, thanks, Jackie. Um, yeah, I've been in the business, just a little bit about myself, really. I've been in the business about 35 years um, and been involved with the guided wave technology for about 20 years. My first introduction to the technology was spent was spent many 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 weeks in in the Middle East with uh, with with David Lane, very young David Lane at that time, well youngish, uh, testing road crossings. Uh, that was in the days of, of the first commercial um, set of equipment, which was the SE16. Uh, since then, I think Jackie has probably mentioned we've moved on to the um, to the G, G3, G4, G4 Mini. And during that time, the technology has, 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 has gone on leaps and bounds as the, as, as the, the software, the probes uh, and the rings. And there's been numerous upgrades of, of the kit. Um, we, we as a company and myself have worked in many parts of, of the world um, from you know, the heat of the Middle East in the summer to the the winters of, 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 of Kazakhstan um, and Jackie's asked me to come along here to, to basically answer any of your questions as, a, as an end user. Uh, mo most of our customers are in, are in fact NDT companies uh, and many of them we've supported in their early days who have then gone on to, to purchase equipment. So that, that's sort of our, our background. So I'm happy to answer any any questions truthfully and honestly about the the technology and its application. So, um, so how easy is, how easy is it to use, um, uh, Mike? You know, do you find that uh, that it is easy to use, set up, collect the data, and get the report out to the client? The the kit itself is 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 straightforward to use, but the training and the experience of using it is essential. Um, Girl, do a very good training course but even after the training course you need on-site um, training as, as well so 
yes, the, the kit is easy, it's, it's relatively straightforward to, to use, but it's got to be used properly. Uh, and, and I can't sort of say that uh, sort of firm enough, really. You, you've got to, to use it properly, the right application um, with the right qualifications and the right experience. So, uh, so when you're talking about the training, how important is it that the staff have maybe UT experience or some experience welding? Is that is that is that important to the to us as part of this training? The the, the UT experience is is useful. It's not the be all and end all. Um, you've got to know about UT because if you do come across an issue on site, you need to be able to to prove it up. Um, but that that's not. You've got to remember that with this technology, we're working in a completely different frequency spectrum to conventional ultrasonics. We're working in, you know, in sometimes close to audible frequency. It's more of a mechanical uh, process. So UT experience is good. You do need someone with UT experience on site, um, but understanding pipelines is probably more important. And the, the, you know, you need to ask the customer questions when you go to site, what, you know, what's the pipeline used for, what's in it? Are there any problems? Build up a picture of, of of what's what sh you should be getting before you even start doing a test. Okay, okay. So obviously you talk about uh, where you've used the equipment or, or you, you touched on it. So from the reliability of the equipment, you know, have you experienced our equipment in extreme conditions? I mean, I know you're based in the UK, so a lot of rain, but uh, obviously any other conditions that you've you've got experience of? Yeah, we, we obviously we, we've worked in you know, in, in the Middle East when it's been 55 degrees. And we've worked in Kazakhstan, Alaska, when it's been sort of minus 30, minus 40 degrees. And whilst the kit is not designed for extremes, you can simply overcome them by, you know, pr protecting a little bit. But general day-to-day -day temperatures of, of sort of minus 10 to plus 40, there's no great issue with it. The main issue, in all honesty, is the laptops. Um, they don't like the rain, um, so that's that's our biggest biggest problem, really. Okay, not not a lot we can do about that till technology. No. Well, you so, just so, the playground around it, but. so I take it the tough the tough pad that that's not sort of it's waterproof, or is it just seeing the screen with the rain? It, it, the, no, the, the the laptops we 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 personally use the Panasonic laptops, but you can use whatever you want, really. Sure. It's the fact that the water hits the screen and then the, the, the mouse starts dan dancing all over the screen, not so much the water gets into anything. With the rings and the G4, it's really a simple matter of just putting, a, you know, if it's raining, putting a sheet over them or, or something of that nature. So um, it's very rare that the, the weather uh, stops you completely. Hmm. OK, I mean, going on to sort of the equipment, um, I know that one of the things that, that Gull's been really keen on is 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 making sure that the, the equipment is durable, which is why we introduced initially the compact ring, because there's a lot less wires, a lot less cables to to, to go wrong. We all know that they, they can be an issue. Um, so so what sort of are the advantages, do you think? I mean, installation time, you know, cabling, that kind of thing. Um, you know, are they advantages to you? Calibration, for example, is every three years with GUL. So are they advantages for using gull equipment? Yeah, I mean, the, the kit is actually really robust. Um, you've, you've got to remember that, that you're dealing with expensive electronics. So you don't, you know, providing you treat it well, it will, it will, it will last you well. We've still got, I mean, we started in this I don't know, 20 years ago when the when we had the old blue rings, and we still have some of them. So the kit itself is pretty pretty robust, um, and the, the backup we get from you know from Gull for spares and what have you is pretty good. And providing you know how to do minor maintenance, you shouldn't have any any issues really. Okay, okay. Because of course, one of the compact rings was because of the spacing in between the pipes, and I know that's a lot better with the compact ring than some of the other rings. Yeah, we, we've we've there's one of our engineers on site today with a, with a with a compact ring. Um, he's actually testing lamp posts of all things, but um, the the occasionally the, the the slimness of of the ring is is a great benefit. But the compact ring in particular, it's it's got a different latching mechanism on it to the the other ones. Um, so it's uh, and of course with the different probes in it um, to the to the conventional rings, but you can get by the problem with the old with the with the 
EFC rings by taking a probe out. So you, you, you know, if you've got pipes that are close together, uh, you can still get the ring on a lot of occasions. Yeah. And of course, with the sensors on the compact rings, you don't have to fiddle around with changing the probes if you want different frequencies. You've got that advantage with the compact rings. That's right. You just, you just plug, plug a um, cable into a different different socket, so you've got much more uh, a larger frequency spectrum to work with. OK, OK. And I noticed that people, a lot of people talk about the onboard diagnostics that we have. Um, how have you found that? Is that an advantage to you guys? Uh, it is. When, when, we, when we first started, there was no um, diagnostics on this kit at all. Um, and you, you had to, uh, that, that came, came later. So the onboard uh, diagnostic checks, you can check the cables, you can check the, the electronics themselves in, in, the, in the G4s. It's been a major leap, uh, leap forward in, in technology. OK, thank you. Um, and, and really talking about the um, analysis of the data. I mean, we saw Alan today um, doing a quick, very quick report. It seemed very seamless. How easy is it to analyse uh, anal analyze the data? That's a good question. Um, again, it comes down to training and the, the train. I can't stress enough how important the, the training is and then the on site uh, training thereafter and, and experience. It's a, it's a bit like, you know, you've learned to drive a car and now you're going to jump into a Formula One car. Um, you, you've got to gradually, gradually get there. But the system, the technology again has changed a lot. We've got absolute calibration now. We've got a lot of other features. We've got the unrolled pipe display we didn't have. So the technology is changing. And, and I must admit, one thing I would say is that whilst if, if we have any issues, go, go tend to sort them out. But they are continually developing the, the the technology, and they do listen to to customers when you know when they feed back information to them. A lot of the a lot of the developments in in the technology have, have come from operators like ourselves that have said, well, we wanted to do this. Can you do this? Or can we can we change this and this? And you know, they, they, they've done it. Okay. Um, finally, before we let you go, because um, I know you are you're doing this as a as a favour to us. Um, finally, before you go, yeah, what sort of I'm going to ask you this: What makes the difference between us, our equipment, and other equipment on the market today with guided waves? Um, in honesty, I can't answer that 100% because I've never used the, the competition's equipment. All I can say is that I've worked with other companies that have purchased the competition's equipment, and they tell me that now it sort of sits in a corner and they use the, the gold kit. But um, all I can give you is my experience of, of, of you know, the gold technology. So. Okay. Please don't leave it there if I can. No, no, that's fine. And I, I know I was putting you on the spot a bit, but um, I'm in sales, so I, I've got to ask those questions. <laughs> OK, so, well, thank you very much, Mike. I really, really appreciate you doing that for us. Um, hopefully uh, people have now understand from an inspection point of view uh, where you're coming from. Um, I think probably now um, we're, we're going to go back um, to maybe the questions and answers. I know we've got a, a few there. Um, so we are going to go back to the, uh, I think we're probably going to bring Alan in here as well. Um, so yeah, um, we've got a couple of questions here, um, whether it's Alan or, or Mike. Um, uh, can this technology be used on the pipes that have spigot and socket joints, such as DI? Um, they, 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 well, carry on, Mike. I was just saying, we're just looking at a job, but basically, when they've got a socket joint on it, it's, it's effectively the end of a pipe. So most of the energy is reflected. So you can test the joint of pipe up until, up until the socket, but that's that's the, the limitation of it. Okay, okay. Yes, be quite honest here. It depends on the length of each pipe between the sockets they're the only ones that you can get meaningful. It's the same as conductors, some screw conductors that you get offshore because one screws into the other. So it, the actual waves sees that as the end of the pipe. So that means you've got to move. Say that the conductor is 10 meters. That means you can only get in 10 meters of pipe. 
and then you're going to move on to the next one. Okay, thank you, guys. Um, another one here. Do you need to remove the insulation before placing the ring on the pipe? Is it possible to place the ring over the insulation? Definitely not, because obviously you need the outer part of the pipe to actually place and pressurize the probes on to introduce the sound into the material of the pipe. So there's no way that you can do it if it's loud and glad. Okay. I hope I answered that. I would put the scenario. What is usually for CUI, you pull off a section of the cladding and obviously there, and then you've got an area. So that means the removal isn't 100%, like a lot of the uh, oil companies do. It's just about a meter of cladding is removed. You put in the ring there, how many covers meters and meters of a pipe, depending on the complexity of the system that you are testing. Okay, maybe maybe a question. Oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, there are a number of systems on the market that claim to do corrosion under insulation, but a lot of them only give an indication where the where the sensors are. So they run along the the pipe, and it might be the top, the bottom, the side, and that's what the information you get. I think there's some misinformation sometimes that what systems do, whereas when we do um, CUI work, we, we normally take off, as Alan was saying, about a metre of uh, uh, insulation, uh, and then you know we're testing sort of 10, 15, 20, 30 metres along, along the pipe, and we get all of the pipe. Okay, thanks. Um, we have another one, um, which probably both of you can answer because you've both got lots of experience. But what about the dust and sand effect on the equipment? Uh, I think it's a, like, to be quite honest here, right? Environment affects every bit of equipment. So what we are looking at is obviously look after the equipment like you would look after anything else. The actual equipment is made to stand, obviously, different temperatures and everything else. So as long as you keep your workplace clean, right, there shouldn't be much problems. As Mike pointed out in his, he spent most of his time in Saudi. So obviously the be best thing there is sand. So I take it, but Mike, he didn't have much problem with the environment. Oh, you, 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 you just, you've got to remember that these large cables have got small connectors in them and you don't want to get sand in them. So you tend to keep your keep your kit clean, blow the sand out of things, and you don't tend to have any issues from, from that side of things. Okay, uh, we have another one here. How, how those amplitude peaks were calculated, WRT distance inside the pipe? Does that make sense? Uh, I'm assuming the the, looking at the, the amplitude of the A-scan dis, display, I'm assuming that's what what the, the question is. Yeah, my might a little bit, obviously, it's not um, a clear question, so maybe, obviously, he needs to uh, get in touch with us and clarify it a bit better. Okay. Yeah. Um, is, is, there a, is there a focusing capability? Um, to be quite honest, so, uh, the focusing capability is over the whole diagnostic length because you get all the frequencies all gathered so you can go through the frequency regime obviously in every part. Um, the question I would ask, why would you use focusing? So that means you're going to determine when you're actually doing the shot, where would you use this? There? Where with the equipment GL, it's all there. So any piece of the pipe, Obviously, you can look at the frequency regime. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's what basically it, Mike. Sorry. So basically, obviously, it doesn't really matter because you've got all the frequencies on all the location on the pipe. So you can have a look at it and change things, obviously, uh, while you're interpreting it. 
So we have another question here. Um, what's the effect of elbows? Do they impose challenges? Complexity, obviously, is straight pipes is um, the main one. Elbows have got unique signatures. So basically what you have, we've got a signature of the weld. Obviously, you've got the inner part of the elbow, which we actual sound travels faster, and the outer part where the sound travels slowly, and then obviously it comes back to the weld itself. What you can use is obviously when you're doing this type of thing, is if you see a change in different elbows, obviously you can use it. But if you're a basic operator, what we're saying is you don't take it across a bend or anything because you're only doing bare pipe. It takes advanced people, as Mike mentioned, they have a lot of experience with them to do more complex applications. Okay, good. I think the, one of the answers we give to our customers is that we can, bear in mind all of our guys at our, our level twos, we can shoot through one bend normally, two at a push, but that's as far as we want to go. Um, I would agree with that, Mike. Sorry? I would agree with what you're saying, right? Obviously, um, if you, you avoid that experience, you know, around there, that's about the same, I would say, is exactly what it is, one, maybe two. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, um, what system works best on risers? Um, or soil to air interface locations, how much penetration can be achieved? Right, um, I'll take a bit of it. Mike might join in with it. Obviously, on risers, what you have on risers is different coatings on the riser. And obviously, it's usually near prima or whatever. And when you hit the splash zone, the actual coating thickness gets increases. And obviously, depending on the increase of that coating, it will affect your diagnostic length. So it depends on obviously the um, construction of the riser and the coating on it, and that's obviously will affect the diagnostic length of your shot. Yeah, I think just to comment on Alan's, it's basically down the the attenuation of of. of the signal. If you have if you have a, um, a coating that's sort of soft and gooey, for want of a better word, the, the shorter the range, but hard, uh, the longer the range. We we on risers we we shot 20, 30 meters without too much problem. But then some of them are only sort of 10 meters. Uh, it, it all all depends. Okay. I can actually give you an example. Uh, we did. And this was back in 2007, and it was when the GPIMS was being used first. And on the southern sector of the North Sea, we actually went to do a riser. And amazingly, we had 80 meters to the seabed. And obviously, when that was achieved, the client thought it was good. I've never, ever been able to get anywhere near about 80 meters since. But that was a unique situation where obviously everything, like as you mentioned, attenuation and everything else was favorable. Okay. Um, during your live demonstration, Alan, you mentioned about changing the distance of the probes. Um, can you explain what would be the benefit of changing? Yes, um, I've got to my hands. I hope you can see them because I can't see myself. But I have got the old type ring and this is the new ring, right? And if you notice, there's three probes here. And what you can do is change because to change the frequencies, we need to change the distance between the probes. In this particular probe, which is the old type probe, we will have to have a screwdriver, whatever, to release the probe, lift this bit here, and then change it. So that yeah, for high definition, we would have 20 mil spacing. For standard definition, we would have 35. And for um, highly attenuated areas, right, we would go to the 50 mil. 
So that means I'm going to do each probe. And if I show you a ring, and you can see how many are in it, right? That means I'm going to change every one of them. This particular ring, right? You can change the combination by changing what probes you want to use and changing the cable positions here. So as an operator, if you had this a few years ago, I would have been a really happy person. I think that answers that. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, we've, we have had a question or a couple of questions on the QSR, which was mentioned in my presentation, but we're here today to talk about the wave maker. So um, any of you guys interested in the QSR, you can drop us a, a question or an email, but also we will be doing one of these live demonstrations in the coming months on the QSR. So look out for your invite for that. Um, but I say we, we'll answer that uh, an, another day. Um, are there any other questions? While we've got sort of over 80 years or over 70 years worth of experience here in front of us. <laughs> Sorry, Mike and Alan. Um, you make us feel old, though, uh, Jackie. <laughs> oh. uh, you've, you've got, you know, no, no word of a lie, guys, on this, on this call. You've got the best of the best. So if you have any other questions, uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes just to type anything on or raise your hand. Um, otherwise, I think we're sort of slowly drawing to an end. Um, it, Okay, I can't see anyone's hands up. So, um, yeah, if there's no further questions, um, I really would like to thank everyone for attending and making this uh, live demo a success. Uh, thank you, Alan. Thank you, Mike. You've been a real help. Um, there will be a recording of this demo, and at some point it will be placed on YouTube, and you can see it and share it um, maybe later this week. You'll also get immediately after this phone call, you'll get an email with a quick questionnaire about how today has gone. And I really would appreciate it. All of GUL would appreciate if you could spend a few minutes. It's only 10 questions, multiple choice, um, and it will help us improve in the future. This is one of our first demos. We did one back in last year in the Asia Pacific region. Um, and we're also planning on doing lots more. Obviously, this pandemic is very strange for everyone. So the way to get our uh, our knowledge out there is by doing more of these. So we will be doing some on scanning, monitoring. We'll let you know on LinkedIn or, or our website or just check your emails. Um, so if there's nothing else, um, stay safe, um, stay well and thank you and goodbye, everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jackie.